Hi everyone. Now today we will be talking about a topic which many times people get confused. You no, know, that uh, what is this? You see a white membrane passing through the amniotic cavity. You know, while you are doing an obstetric scan and you come across a case where you find a white membrane passing through the amniotic cavity, and you get confused what it is. You no, know, there are so many things that come to your mind. It may be amniotic sheet. It may be amniotic band. It may be a circumvallate placenta, or it may be a uterine septum, or it is a twin membrane, or it is a chorioamniotic separation, or is it unfused amnion? Now, as far as unfused amnion, chorioamniotic separation, twin membrane are concerned, we can easily diagnose them. No, we know that yes, these are the things we are very familiar with and how they would look. Twin membrane, we are going to very often see another twin. Plus, we usually don't get confused with these. but we get more confused with the others and what is amniotic sheet what is amniotic band what is circumvallate and what is a uterine how do you differentiate it from uterine septum so all these things may come to our mind so i thought we'll just talk about these today now i'll start with amniotic sheet now before i do that i will just tell you one thing you no know, people very often use the two terms amniotic sheet and amniotic band you know interchangeably ideally it should not be used because amniotic sheet is a different entity and amniotic band which is kind of it is associated with a syndrome called amniotic band syndrome is a little different entity but very often people use this as uh, uh, the interchangeably this is used which should not be ideally anyhow let us start first with amniotic sheet now what is amniotic sheet let us just go to the picture now if you just look at this picture this is a uh, picture which is showing you it's a trans abdominal scan and we are doing an obstetric case obviously the fetus is not so much in view some fetal parts are seen cord this looks like cord this is some limb area but what we notice is that there is placenta here anteriorly and this is the uterine wall and from here we are seeing that there is a sheet like a membrane like area which is crossing the amniotic cavity antero posteriorly if you notice its base is a little broad and the other side is not that broad right so what we notice it's a thicker membrane not very thin it is going antero posteriorly you know, antero posteriorly it is crossing the amniotic cavity so these are basically amniotic sheets now they are tight they have a free edge on one side you no know, the other end is which obviously i cannot show you in 2d the other end is free in these cases and what is the main thing that the fetal parts the fetus you will see going it across here freely it will be moving freely across this area right say so like for example if we say this is a twin membrane then obviously one twin will be on this side the other one will be on this side but in this case you will notice that the there is a single fetus and the fetal parts can freely move from here to there what are actually what is actually this amniotic sheet amniotic sheet are basically believed to be uterine synechae which have been formed maybe due to previous cesarean or dnc or endometritis and there are synechae or adhesions in the uterine cavity and when the patient becomes pregnant the membrane grows over these the membranes the amnion and the chorion they grow over these synechae and they lead to the formation of amniotic sheet they are believed to be harmless most of the time they usually don't cause much problem but now new studies have some of them are suggesting that sometimes this may lead to some uh, premature labor or some kind of an issues but most of the time what we noticed that these are just benign in nature some cases what you may notice in case of amniotic sheet you will notice that placenta this is a very rare thing but it may happen the placenta may be growing or moving over the sheet now then this becomes a little risky because this placenta has not got a proper support so there is a risk of bleed and all in these cases right you can see here no this is the membrane is not very clearly seen just because we are focusing on the placenta so this is the thin membrane and over it lies the placenta no like a hammock like a like a swing like a hammock it is lying all over the amniotic sheet and these cases can be problematic at least we should not try to deliver them in a normal way we would need a cesarean section for them it would be a safer option to prevent any bleeds and all to occur then we come to another entity that is another membrane like area that we may come across amniotic band now what is amniotic band when you look at it here if you just notice this is this is the cord and can you see there's a thin band which is attaching thin membrane which is attaching attaching to the cord again these are the pictures which i have borrowed from a book just to show you 
and you can see here there is again a thin membrane like area which is attaching to the fetal hand and then again here you can see it is attaching to the fetal limb and what we notice here that in this limb this area is okay but this is too edematous. Now what is this amniotic band or amniotic band syndrome and how it is different from amniotic sheet? Amniotic band syndrome basically is due to the rupture of the amnion inside the cavity itself and when the amnion ruptures it breaks up into a number of bands or strands and many times what happens these bands or strands they go and attach to the fetal parts or cord and then once they attach to the fetal parts then what they may do they may form constriction bands on the fetal parts and this may lead to the ischemia and later on atrophy of the fetal part and amputation. Right, so spontaneous amputations may occur, spontaneous malformations may occur. So this is a risky situation. No, it's a fatal kind of a fatal thing can happen in this. It is not very, it is not benign like amniotic sheet. Right. How it is different from amniotic sheet? Amniotic sheet is basically synechia which is covered by membranes. So it is having two membranes, that is two chorions and two amnions. So it's a thicker membrane. While the uh, amnion amniotic band, it is just amnion. So it is thin it is thin and as a result you will see okay you can yourself make out no this is thin and this is thicker thicker and thin the amniotic sheet will not be attached to any fetal parts fetus will be moving freely but here the, it would be like a chain tied to the fetal parts or uh, the, the cord like in this case you see it is attached to the cord in this case you see it is attached to the limb and here because of the constriction band a part of the limb has become edematous the other part is normal so this is what is amniotic band syndrome right now we come to another membrane like area see here now how it is different amniotic sheet was running anterior posterior while this is parallel to the placenta this is attached to placenta on both edges no it's like a shelf it's like a shelf so it is attached to placenta on both the edges of placenta now this is a fold in the placental membranes basically now what is it actually what is circumvallate placenta this is circumvallate placenta and why what is circumvallate placenta in circumvallate placenta the Chorionic plate of the placenta, which is towards no towards the amniotic side, is the chorionic plate, and this is the basal plate. So the chorionic plate towards the side of amniotic cavity is shorter compared to the basal plate. As a result, the membranes which are covering the placenta are extra in the region of chorionic plate, and they are extra. They are like so they just fold. They just fold, and this fold is the one that we see. And how do we differentiate it from amniotic sheet? Amniotic sheet is attached to placenta on one side. It runs anteroposteriorly. Circumvallate placenta, you will see the band is attached to edges of placenta. The placental edges are curved on both the sides, while in that case it would not be so. What are the risks associated with circumvallate placenta? Previously we used to say that there is no risk, but now they have found that certain abrupt show conditions or some kind of obstetric complications may be observed with circumvallate placenta. So it is important for us to mention it in the report. You have to mention all these things, even amniotic sheet, so that the obstetrician is aware. Then we come to the last picture, this is uterine septum. Now I don't think you would confuse the uterine septum with these entities because most of the uterine septums are much thicker and then they have myometrium in them. No, there is the, you can notice no, this, this is continuity of the myometrium. So they are darker. They are usually much thicker, especially at the base, at the origin they are very thick. Plus you can follow the septum. You will see that the septum would be arising from the fundal region. Right, so I don't think you should confuse it with the septum. Right, so these are the things, four entities that I wanted to bring to your notice. Otherwise, obviously you may see membranes uh, as a chorion amniotic separation also would be seen as a membrane area. Unfused amnion also would be seen as a membrane area and twin membrane obviously we have but these are more common and we are well aware of them my primary point was that you should not confuse between all these entities and you should be aware because see amniotic sheet is not that risky this is obviously a little riskier situation when placenta grows over it amniotic band syndrome can lead to fetal malformations can lead to fetal amputations part of amputations of fetal parts so these things are important 
circumvalid placenta again may be benign where very uh, few cases have been associated with certain risky outcomes and then uterine septum again usually will not cause much problem as such if the pregnancy is going going smoothly but yes you should be aware and you should mention them in your report what exactly you are seeing right and most important thing is that don't use the term amniotic band for amniotic sheet no because see both have different implications so it's always a better option that we use the term sheet now sheets can be usually sheets what i have seen practically are single but one or two cases we saw they were multiple and you can uh, you can correlate no that it could be because of multiple synechia while you uh, amniotic band they are usually multiple they are usually multiple so i hope this clarifies a few things for you Thank you very much.